Hello there and welcome to Travels with Geordie. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live in Victoria, British Columbia aboard this classical wooden motor cruiser uh, with the loving memory of my pup Geordie. All the while fixing it up for some pretty major cruising someday. So if that's the sort of thing you might be interested in, please consider sticking around and subscribing. Ah, it begins. And by begins, I mean I'm finally going to tackle the bright work, which is in shabby shape, having <laughs> let it go for two years. And that is an absolute no-no in the wooden boat world, especially one that lives outside. Now about that canopy. <laughs> one of the few perks of this marina is this bizarre little floating platform, which actually used to be the uh, front vestibule for a float home that was here. Anyway, it became a marina property, and it's actually quite handy for working on boats. Several people have been able to take advantage of it uh, to be able to work alongside their boats, which is how I'm going to do the bright work, uh, largely because I want to do it off the dock for a couple reasons. One, it's in the shade, and two, it will drastically mitigate sound noise to my neighbors. Anyway, it's fun to roll along. Of course, I know this is paddling, not rowing. Yes, yes. Actually, to be fair, I suppose it's scully. All right, now, now this may work out really, really well. It's certainly easy to start my day. It's sort of onto the ferry. And then uh, what I'm going to do is use the stern line and um, as you can see I've got it started to be fastened here and I'm gonna run that taut all the way along the side of the boat and then I'll just tie myself along at different places as I do the work I'm doing. <laughs> Love this thing! Let's get moving! So then what I can do is whatever sp spot I want to be at, I just tighten up both sides of the uh, line here. <laughs> this is going to be great. It's worked out great. I uh, don't mind the helicopter. So uh, I'm ready to start scraping here. We got the vacuum. 99.9% uh, .9 of the flakes will land on the platform, which I could quickly vacuum up. This is, this is just going to be awesome. And it begins. Ooh, teak. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to make you watch much of this. And in just a few minutes, I've made some pretty good headway on here. Again, you've heard me talk about these Baco carbide scrapers before. These are the scraper. There's a good, those who are going to object and they want to just keep a regular old school, school Richards blade really really sharp and, and that's fine. I just kind of like not having to do that. Anyway, this is going splendidly well, catching all the shavings and uh, I'm going to start sanding. All right then, getting a little scraping done and that's great, but it's time to bite the bullet and get rid of this stainless valve hole. Uh, had it on Craigslist for two weeks, not a nibble. So, I'm going to unscrew all the stanchion bases and I'm chop it up into pieces that'll fit in my truck. All right then, so about there and at the front and the same opposite. You notice that I finally put the guard back on my grinder. I mean, what the heck? It doesn't get in the way? Well, I think it looks so much better without the pulpit. Not that I'm the king of aesthetic these days. Back to work. So what I thought I'd do as I'm doing a stem to stern uh, project on the refinishing is along the way I'd give you a stem to stern update on the various intricacies of the boat and uh, problems and features and what I'm planning to do. So let's start absolutely at the bow, shall we? So I have this 
um, 20 kilogram anchor, which I'm very, very happy with. And uh, I love these anchors. I think they're great. Uh, in time, I might want a slightly heavier one, but 40 pounds, 42 pounds, 44 pounds, pretty good for a 38 foot boat. Um, I splurged some years ago on a stainless folding uh, bow roller, which does make um, retrieval of the anchor really handy because it can come right up and in without having that difficult point where the roller is at, at, the, uh, at the shackle there. So that is a wonderful piece of kit, but I don't really like the way it looks, but you know, can't worry about that too much. And at the time I put this Sapelli extension on here and I think it works out pretty well. The old uh, bow roller thing, I cannot remove from the um, stem and uh, it's probably on with 5200, no doubt about it. Okay, the windlass. This thing works, uh, but it's a beast. Uh, it's chain drive down to a um, gear reduction unit and electric motor below the deck and it barely works. I don't trust it at all and I am on the hunt for a new windlass and I'm going to talk to you about that a little later. Um, but I mean on the whole it hasn't failed me. Okay if we move further aft along the bulwarks or tow rail or whatever we're going to call this piece here which is teak. Um, there was this sort of addition put on here to put these bow chocks on. And um, I'm not particularly crazy about the way that's set up. It's certainly not very strong, but uh, that's something I'm gonna have to deal with in time. Okay, this main cleat on the foredeck is woefully inadequate as either even a mooring cleat or certainly an anchoring cleat um, uh, or a towing cleat or anything. I really, this has got to go and I'm very much hoping to replace it with a nice big bronze Samson post. Uh, so I'm gonna, Keep an eye out for one of those and that will sit on an extension when i replace the windlass and i replace this cleat i'm going to build a full length heavy sapelli mahogany to about here um timber that will be through bolted to all the deck beams so that i can have a very strong setup for both the windlass and the future samson post here uh moving along buttons for the windlass well i don't know quite what i'll do uh, they work relatively well. I'll do something similar for that. These chocks for um, the old Danforth anchor that used to be stored up here are going to go. And uh, unfortunately, they're through bolted, so I need some assistance to get below and deal with that. I am so thrilled to have the um, pulpit gone. It just feels so much nicer up here with all that mesh of stainless hanging around. As I may have mentioned, I have been gifted, thank you ever so much, um, a Chris Craft style four hatch and uh, start to restore and get that on over the winter. So that will be really, really good. Okay, so <laughs> the windshield. Those of you who've been following along know that I put some work into the windshield last fall because it desperately needed it. And well, yes, the varnish has failed because I only put one coat of varnish on. Yes, this refinishing thing, I don't have a very good track record, I know. So, but it's actually in pretty good shape underneath that. And I'll uh, get to that in the next couple of days and uh, trying to get more varnish on this year. Now, the truth is, this entire windshield is made of Douglas fir. Uh, it was repaired sometime in the past and not terribly well. You can see some chunks of, oh, I don't know, body filler sticking up through here and things like that. So this is definitely going to have to be completely rebuilt in the distant future. <laughs> All right then, so from down on the platform, uh, you can see the work I did yesterday and uh, it's gone Really well, of course, it's the easiest bit of work to do on the boat. Sadly, we have a split damage here, which at some point I'll do something about. There's a little Dutchman put in here at some point. But on the whole, this bulwark tow rail, it becomes a tow rail, and rub rail are in great shape. And they're teak. And someone put them on here in the not too distant past, uh, and they did a really quite nice job of it. So I wanted to point out from this position um, that also these decks were glassed not that long ago. And they were done underneath both these rails. So if you look carefully, you can actually see the cloth um, here as it wraps over the edge of the deck and underneath the rub rail. And it's in really quite nice shape. So I'm actually very, very grateful for that. There may be some cracks and splits in up here, but on the whole, it's not bad. And I don't know quite how I'm going to deal with in the future. Of course, I have a long-term fantasy of teak, but that's a long-term fantasy. Okay, let's carry on with the tour. Okay, so we carry on with the house. Uh, wow, right off the back, you can see a big chunk of body filler in here. Uh, assortment of things going on. This is original Honduran mahogany, as is up there. 
uh, this perhaps, except where it's rotten here. And then we moved to Douglas fir around the corner uh, in previous repairs. New teak, I don't know what to call this, brow piece? I don't know what you'd call that. Um, the window trim is also not original and it's in a inferior mahogany type wood. Maybe it's marenta, I don't know what it is, but I've discovered it doesn't take um, oil and varnish the same way as genuine 100 mahogany so i have to stain it in advance which is kind of a pain waiting on the plane and of course they're not in great shape but there's nothing i'm going to do about them right now and that is a pretty good segue into sealing the windows this glass is not another plane okay so um the glass isn't properly set into a rabbit in the cabin side i don't think pumping sealant into here or around the corner and up on top to the end of time is going to guarantee that these windows don't leak. I've actually got them so they're pretty good now, but they're not perfect. I'm going to have to redo the whole way these windows sit in the cabin sides at some point. And that will beg the question, will I just rebuild the cabin sides in Numaha? It's, wow, such an incredibly bizarre and far reaching consequence thought. I'm not even gonna go there, but it's a liability. There's another extended liability in these cabin sides is at some point quite a few um, carbon steel fasteners were put in it in various places which has created a lot of uh, blackness. Now I've had some success with oxalic acid taking this out in the past but not entirely so we'll play with that a bit. As you can see it's a bit of a dog's breakfast over here but anyway we'll carry on. Okay so here we have the transition from the foredeck um, the step down to the main deck. Now this is a raised four deck boat um, or a flush deck some people might call it. I just love the way these boats are and of course this version of the Monk has a concave transition although many including MV Zephyrus has a convex transition here. Anyway I guess when Monk was drawing sometimes he just went Hur! and sometimes he went Hur! okay uh, this was a vent and there's a channel down into the uh, engine bay for that and I'm going to rework how that works but more on that later. So you can see <laughs> some liabilities in here, difficult places to work, uh, high moisture damage over the years but still saveable for now. I'm not going to mess with it too too much. Now the windows are in actually they're in great shape because I've refinished them once before but I only ever put oil on them and that's why they're gray now but they will refinish up very nicely but I'll wait and do them over the winter inside um, so that there's even less noise outside because of course that's always the concern here um, noise and dust from my neighbors um, the frame for this which comes all the way around here you can see is also Douglas fir um, and in pretty ratty shape uh, so that's an easy fix at some point I will uh, remake these out of um, Sapelli and I think they'll work out quite nicely. It's tempting to do it now because of course it would also make it a lot easier to refinish the cabin sides but I just can't take on more than simply getting the boat protected right now or I will be deep in yeah. Anyway carrying on uh, more windows. Um, I'm just stripping today with the heat gun and the carbide scraper. It's going really well. I'll show you some pictures of that in a minute and uh, again window issues to deal with. Yeah, going well though, really. Okay, now that brings us to this area here. <laughs> this is one of the biggest messes on the boat. Um, regular viewers will know that I've talked about this before. Uh, all of this wood, this, 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 is not original. It's actually Sapelli. And uh, it's to deal with some serious freshwater rot that happened in this area. And you can imagine because water would trickle down in here and just be a total mess. So the ends of these planks, I would imagine, are completely shot in here, as are these ones here as well. I, that mess up there probably tells me. Um, I really want to be able to restore this area back to the way it originally was. Uh, that will mean scarfing in some more uh, Honduran mahogany, which I have sourced. And I believe originally, or at least the way I want to do it, these will end up curving in. Uh, so this will be curved at this point to meet that surface there. And uh, this then will also curve in here. But most significantly, the cabin side from the wheelhouse will continue in an arc, let me not step off the end of the ramp here, in an arc down to about here. So all of this will be one flat surface um, 
uh, in, in, uh, in, on this same plane here. And the cabin top will come down in a curve and arc about here, echoing basically the curve at the, uh, at the aft cockpit there. So now that's an ambitious project, definitely ambitious. And it also requires the reconstruction of the nasty mess of a plywood upper helm, um, which is just also a total mess right now. I'm definitely not doing that this <laughs> season. So it pains me, but I'm going to refinish this mess right here one more time because I've already done it twice before. <laughs> Um, but in time, I just thought I'd let you know how that's all going to come together. Yeah, ambitious. Little update, this is going really, really well. I am um, prioritizing the uh, tow rail and the rub rail right now uh, because it's Sunday and I'd rather not use the sander. And it's still, there's no wind, which is the best time to do anything on the very edge of the boat because it is so easy for me to catch all the shavings. Whereas work on the actual cabin sides, I have one more chance uh, to catch shavings if it's slightly windier. Anyway, it's going really, really well. It's basically, I'm not using heat here. I'm simply using the carbide scraper and uh, it's just a matter of scraping. <laughs> well, this has been a heck of a lot of fun. I'm removing all the old caulking and for the next little while while I'm working on the windows I'm going to use the word caulking for sealant instead of what wooden boat caulking really is on the bottom just because I'm likely to do that okay so I had put on some black uh, 291 in an emergency over the winter to try and keep it from leaking and it had been relatively effective but it was just slathered on perhaps you saw me do that um, underneath that is an assortment of there's a brown stuff there there's a white stuff and I can tell you the white stuff is quite gummy so anyway without doing too much damage to the trim which of course isn't worth much um, I'm going to try and dig it out as deep as I can and then clean the glass as well as I can so that I can put in some new sealant caulking. Uh, these sliding windows, there's um, one next to my bed here and one opposite in the head. I actually love them because they're opening windows. However, they're just RV windows. Um, plastic vinyl RV windows that uh, someone put some trim over to sort of make them match. But if you look carefully, they're at least two inches too short. And um, of course, they're pretty much shot. So. <laughs> another thing that needs redoing and I'll probably make windows um, with as little um, sort of manufactured product as possible <laughs> anyway that's a that's a project for way down the road let's let's get stripping more of this bloody ferrous <sighs> black disease Okay, so here's another interesting little problem. This is, if I stand back a bit, uh, basically where the cabin side goes from inside the aft cabin to outside in the cockpit. And there's a lot of damage here, <laughs> no doubt. Um, there's a spline in here um, that really isn't very well fit and uh, not in great shape. But the most significant thing for me right now are the screws that went through the cabin side and into the bulkhead. And when I replaced the bulkhead, um, I never, um, re put new bungs in here and in fact you can probably see the remnants of some clear tape I put over this I'm not sure if that helped or hindered but anyway I'm scraping it back down now so I'm gonna have to uh, rebung all of these and um, with some Honduran mahogany because this is Honduran and uh, happily uh, my very good friend Owen brought me over a genuine piece of Honduran mahogany just big enough to cut the plugs for this so that should work out really well I have the same problem on the other side and it's much worse because at some point someone lost track of where the bulkhead was and there's there's screws everywhere. I just realized this might be a good time to review the scrapers. Yes, I've talked enough about these Baco carbide scrapers. I love them. Now, I have several. Uh, the small one with the triangular blade and the several versions of longer two and two and a half inch blades. Okay, so you might wonder why on a large surface area like this, I'm using the small one. And the reason is I can apply a lot more pressure because of course the surface area of um, that small blade is much less than the big blade and I can easily put quite a bit more pressure. Now you might say, okay, the big blade has the big handle on it. You can really lean on it. Well, I can't if I've got the other hand on the heat gun. Anyway, it just works out really well with that little 
little blade. However, you gotta be very careful with this pointy blade that you don't catch the corner because you will gouge that up very quickly, which is why on rounded surfaces like this, where you're only ever touching by about a sixteenth of an inch, I use the big one because it's a lot easier for me to control a larger um, length and make sure it's less likely for me to slide off the edge and gouge it. So this is much more convenient or safe anyway than this where there's the likelihood of gouging that up. Anyway, that's why I use the small scraper on the large surfaces. And with that, I have finished heat gunning all the varnish off the port side of the boat. Cool, now we can sand. But first, I figured this is a good spot to explain at least one more of the problems that I'm gonna be dealing with. And that's these fasteners. Now these are screws that hold the cabin side to a relatively robust little block, um, which is screwed to the deck, which on this boat amazingly is solid timber. I believe it's Douglas fir. Anyway, um, as a result, these fasteners are in assorted shape. Um, one would think that, okay, maybe just need new bungs, but I suspect that they may, some of them be ferrous. So really, I should pull all of these, replace them, and put new bungs in. But I'm not going to do that. No, I don't think so. I have to do it eventually. This brings up an interesting thing about varnish, using Epiphanes varnish rather than um, an epoxy, a more permanent thing like say all wood or something like that. And that's that I can easily strip this little strip, do all the work with all these screws, ferret in, oil it and varnish it, and pfft, you'd be hard pressed to see the repair. So that's one of the reasons I really like working with real varnish because the boat needs so many repairs. I'm going to have to re-spline here and there and all kinds of stuff. Of course, there's going to be new windows at some point. I have to deal with this joint, which I don't trust, but I think if I clean that out well enough at the same time I do this, I can come up with something there. So that's my point. You're going to have to always make changes and repairs uh, to your bright work. It's never forever. At least it's not going to be for me. So. Varnish works for me for that. Am I gonna start sanding today? No, huh. No, I'm not. Meeting in front of the pub. See ya. Well, hello there and welcome to the Travels with Jordy Beer of the Week. Another glorious day here and uh, anything for a break from sanding. Uh, so anyway, let's get straight onto the beer. I'm going to Lighthouse Brewery, which is not one of my favorite breweries, but it's here and it's local. And this is their Cloudburst Hefeweizen. And I got it because I've been drinking a lot of IPAs and the bottle looked great. So let's have a look at this. Now, <laughs> traditionally, I'm not too good at pouring these, but anyway, let's see how we do here. Okay, that's pouring just fine. Well, so much sanding, so much scraping. It's going great, but I tell you, it takes a little perseverance to keep at it. Unfortunately, or fortunately, we've had glorious day after glorious day. And of course, that's very, very handy when you're trying to get some work done. All right, so let's see what we think of the um, Cloudburst Hefeweizen. I think I've probably said before that I am not um, much of an expert at Hefeweizens, but um, that's a drinkable beer. I wouldn't say it's noteworthy in any way at all. Lighthouse. Yeah. Anyway, um, it's a fine beer and it's lovely for this afternoon. Oh. For which I need to cheers a few very, very kind people. Um, some new patrons came on this last week, so grateful. Sebastian, uh, a new anonymous uh, patron, Jim Greenwood and Brian Busby. Well, thank you all and uh, cheers to you all and thanks again for coming aboard. Mm. And uh, two new donors on PayPal. Gosh, if I can pronounce this, Joao Carlos de la Miata. I hope I didn't destroy that. I got the Carlos part right, I'm pretty sure. And uh, Robert uh, Crowther for your extended support. I'm really grateful for that. And cheers to you both. Mm. Okay, it's pretty, pretty good. 
Okay, and then some goodies came in the mail from the Amazon wish list. Um, one of the super big bus bars I'm going to need when I get some wiring done this winter. So I'm really looking forward to that. And that came from uh, Sebastian uh, Storholm. Uh, perhaps the same Seb Sebastian that's just come on as a patron. Well, thank you very much, Sebastian, in any event. Wow, that's, that's a lovely thing. And wow, check this out, okay? This is from Rob Crawford, who just watched me working and um, I think I might have said uh, boy I sure could use a pipe wrench and he said I have a pipe wrench or two and he sent me this absolutely gorgeous look there isn't even any chips off the paint off the handle made in America vintage I I don't know but man this is a lovely lovely pipe wrench uh, thank you ever so much for that and there you go cheers well Need a word of the week, and uh, you might have heard me say it. Perseverance. Yes. Have I used that before? I can't even remember. It's taking a little perseverance to keep at this day after day, but the weather's great. It's a super opportunity, and we'll get this boat refinished again. <laughs> Cheers to you all. See you next week.